was hoping you had good news, but you're not pouring that drink because we have a deal. We don't, but we can. What are you saying? I'm saying they offered 30% and I took them down to 25. Then why should I take it? Because he's not the one dragging this fight out anymore, you are. And whether or not you believe he gave up everything for you, he does. Tell me I don't have the right to be angry. Do you know why I never even considered becoming a divorce attorney? Because it's beneath you? Because there are children involved. When people get caught up in divorce, they forget there are some things in life that are more important than money. Okay, Harvey. 25%. You know, you're not exactly the Harvey Specter I was expecting. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? A good thing. You're not exactly the Lewis' sister I was expecting. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? A good thing. Definitely a good thing. Would you like to take me home tonight? I would. But I need you to sign that first. Why is that? Because then you won't be my client anymore. A man with a coat. Maybe you are a white knight after all. Come on, let's get out of here. You and I are gonna have a talk right now. Okay, whatever it is, it can wait. I need to tell you something. Does that have something to do with why my sister just left here too upset to go out to dinner? You piece of shit, I knew it. What'd you do to her now? I didn't do anything to her, Lewis. And when I say now, I mean as opposed to before, when you slept with her. That's right. Donna, the one you tried to steal from me at dinner the other night, told me. Calm you, down, I didn't try to steal anything. You made a promise to me! And even after I told you about when Esther and I were kids and the boys used me to get to her, you still went ahead and betrayed me. Lewis, it had already happened. And I was just now about to tell you. Bullshit. You were never going to tell me. You were going to keep it to yourself to the day you die. Lewis, you have to believe me. I swear I was just about to tell what you. What you're about to do is get your ass kicked. All right, watch yourself. Don't threaten something you can't handle. You don't think I can handle you? You also thought I was too stupid to find out, but I did find out. I found out that you're nothing but a lying, cheating... I didn't cheat with Esther. It was two grown people making a goddamn decision for themselves. Well, that decision ended with her walking out of here near tears because she didn't have all the facts, like the fact that you're a serial womanizer who can't stand when anyone else Shut has the anyone. hell up! So he takes whatever woman's in sight. I'm telling because you. Because he's so messed up from whatever goddamn thing happened to him in his pathetic childhood. Shut he can't. the hell up! He can't! Get away from me. You get the hell out of here. You're looking for the money I supposedly gave Eric Woodall? Want to save me the trouble and just admit what you did? Now, where would be the fun in that? Fine. Keep playing your games, but this time you're going to lose. Why, because you think you convinced Woodall to give me up? Yeah, he came to see me. Said you tried to get him to turn me in. What I said was, you're an arrogant bastard who spent his life manipulating people. And you're the loser who only cares about competition. <laughs> Not my fault you can't beat me. I can this time. Oh, I don't think so, pal. Because he turns on me, I turn on you. If you're talking about 12 years ago, let me remind you, we were both part of that deal. Yes, we were. All three of us were, you, me, and your brother. You leave my brother out of this. Not a chance. And you'd leave this Woodall thing alone. By the time I'm done, all anybody will know about 12 years ago is you gave me a tip and made sure your little brother profited from it. I didn't give you sh You tricked me into giving you inside information and then blackmailed me by giving Marcus money he didn't even know was dirty. That may be the truth, but they're never gonna hear it from me. I'm afraid they just did. 
That's it. Yep. All you have to do is pick one of two characters. No, whichever character I don't pick mm -hmm. is removed from film history forever. It's like they never existed. It's a piece of cake. Okay. Han Solo or Indiana Jones? I'm out. <laughs> What's the problem? You just said it was gonna be a piece of cake. The problem is you just picked the two greatest characters of all time, so. You're right about that. Thank I'm you. sorry. Yes. Let me start with something easier for you. All right. What's your Sundance? Mm. Check, please. <laughs> yeah, we're done. <laughs> no. This is really nice. Yeah, I'm having a really good time, too. So when do I get to hear the answer to what you do besides being a bike messenger? Who says I do anything? Look, Mike, there's nothing wrong with being a bike messenger. But I'm serious about my life. I'm not going to law school just to cash out. I, I really want to help people. Mike, bike messengers don't help people. No, not in the way that a man I want to be in a relationship with does. Well, then today is your lucky day. I knew it. Where do you go? Mm -mm. You first, where do you go? NYU. Columbia. I win. <laughs> Hi, I got a delivery for you. Zoltan Friestmeister, son. I'm afraid there's no one in this office with that name. Uh, I'm afraid you're mistaken. Really? Yeah. Because I'm willing to bet that there's no one on this planet with that name. Okay, fine. If you could just point me towards Kumquat McGilligutty's office, I'll be on my way. <laughs> sure. I certainly did not bike down here with two fictitious deliveries just to tell you what a great time I had last night. Good, because I have a lot of work to do. So if you could please just hop on that little bike of yours. Come here. Yeah. You finished flirting with Quicksilver here. You might want to get down to INS. Hector Suarez just got taken in. His visa's expired. They're gonna send him back to the Dominican Republic. Hey, uh, maybe I can help. No offense, I don't know how no, you... No, 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 Nathan, he's not just a bike messenger. He's in law school. Really? Where are you in law school? Uh, Columbia. And he happens to know visas better than either one of us. Well, I really can't pay you, so... I... No, I'm, I don't need any money. I just want to help. All right, Columbia, be my guest. Got a hearing Tuesday morning, 9 a.m. Mike. That is amazing. Thank you. Well, no, don't take me yet. I haven't even done any. Um, this might not be relevant, but I actually saved Kumquat McGillicuddy's life this morning, so I'm gonna go do some work. Thank you. Go ahead and order. Connolly's running a little late. He should get here at 10 past. You're not giving an interview. I wasn't trying to keep this from you. You didn't exactly CC me on the memo. Very well. You want the truth? I don't particularly appreciate being muzzled. I suggest you don't think of it as muzzled so much as keeping you out of jail for the rest of your life. And what would you have me do, Harvey? Hmm? Take a week in St. Bart's? Because that is not going to happen. I know that's not going to happen. You're on trial for murder. And because of that, a tender offer has been made on a company with my family name. And with all that going on, the fact that I haven't made a statement defending myself is bullshit. It's not bullshit. It's smart. Of course you see it that way. You think I'm guilty. I've told you before, it doesn't matter what I think. But if you think saying you're innocent is going to make people believe you, it won't. Because you know who says they're innocent? Everybody. Every day I keep my mouth shut, our stock takes a dive. And that makes me vulnerable. I get it. You want to convince the world you're not responsible for these murders so you can keep control of your big oil company. That is not what I said. Well, that's how Cameron Dennis is going to make it sound. Ava, you're on trial for your life. This company is my life. And that's exactly what it's going to look like. A greedy oil exec clinging to her money factory with her blood-stained hands. Very well. You've made your point. Now. I suggest you find a way to get me out of both situations, because I am not losing control of my company to Tony Giannopoulos. Sean, what are you doing here? I thought you said you never wanted to see me again. Believe me, Harvey, I wouldn't be here if Andrew Malik hadn't just had me arrested. What? He's claiming we conspired to swap Mike Ross for William Sutter. I'm here to get our story straight. You want our story straight? I'm representing you as of right now. Representing me? What are you talking about? 
You wearing a wire, Sean? You think I'm here to entrap you? Don't act like that's not possible. You had me wear a wire to nail Charles Forsman, and now you're coming to me out of the blue, accusing me of colluding with you. You know what, Harvey? You want to pat me down, feel free, if that's what you think of me. What I think, Sean, is you need to take me up on my offer. And how's that gonna look, you repping me when we've been accused of colluding? I don't give a shit what it looks like. You hire me, we can talk about anything, and it's not admissible. All right, Harvey, you're my lawyer. Now let's talk about the story. Your Honor, this is outrageous. Sean Cahill can't be represented by Harvey Specter. They're using attorney-client privilege to get away with the conspiracy they engaged in in the first place. Not engaged in, are accused of engaging in. And how is that any different than a joint defense agreement? I'll tell you how it's different. You're setting this thing up for a mistrial, because when I win, that's exactly what he'll ask for. Your Honor, I will resign as Mr. Cahill's attorney right now if he hands this case over to someone else. But he won't, because no one else will touch it. I'm not walking away from a case that I've been building for eight months. And if you're so sure we did this, why aren't you coming after me. Because I focus on the bigger fish. That's a load of crap. You're not charging me because you know it'll look like a vendetta. All right, that's enough. Are you willing to waive your right to a mistrial, Mr. Cahill? I am. Well, then I'm afraid he has a right to his counsel of choice, Mr. Malik, and I want discovery documents in his offices in an hour. Hey, you think he's gonna get you out of this? But he doesn't care about you. He only cares about himself. If we're supposed to be sticking together in this, what the hell are you doing volunteering to drop me? Sean, I did it to make a point. He was never gonna take me up on it. And if he did, I'd be in this alone. So next time you feel like freelance, why don't you run it by me first? Okay, I will. Now let's get back to the office, because if I know Malik, there's gonna be some kind of curveball in that discovery. What about a hedge fund guy? It's big money. Think bigger. Obama. I'm not going to land the president as my first client. Fine. You don't think you can. You're not going to manipulate me into trying to land Obama. Well, it better be somebody like that, or Jessica won't give up on her early buy-in bullshit. What if I got myself a sports guy? The very fact that you call it a sports guy means it's a no. Harvey, just because I don't know sports doesn't mean I don't know you. What are you talking about? If I'm going to change Jessica's mind, I can't just land someone. I have to land someone you couldn't. There's no one I couldn't land. You think I don't know about Beijing? That's his word against mine. Oh, well, um, I guess we can clear that up right now because look who just walked in. You knew he was coming here tonight? You think I like Argentinian food? I just need you to stop him for a second. I get it. You got the idea from Working Girl when they crashed the wedding to get to Trask Radio. Harvey, I'm not a 14-year-old girl. I don't get my ideas from movies. Michael. Harvey. I have no interest in talking to you. Hi. Dana Scott. I work with Harvey, and I don't blame you. I wouldn't want him to represent me either, but he's not the only lawyer there. Let me guess. You've done your research on my record, and you're here to impress me. That's what every other lawyer would do. I didn't do that. Harvey, shut up. I don't give a shit about how fast you used to swim. I only care about how fast I can make you money. How fast is that? Why don't you sit down and I'll tell you. All right. Okay. Harvey, you mind? Actually, yeah. Uh... Great, I'll see you tomorrow. Good to see you, buddy. That's what really happened in Beijing. Let's get a drink first. <laughs> Sounds good.